Now we did mention in the last section that it is possible to use the create user command to mimic the effects of the grant command, especially when using the grant usage option which effectively creates an anonymous account. Let's show you how that works out. We'll reopen everything, launch a recent session of gedit which will background our notes and we've laid out a few tasks here including creating users using the grant command with all rights and limited privileges. Now let's focus on revoke. So revoke allows us to revoke access and the syntax mimics syntax mimics grant command for simplicity which means all the grant commands that we've entered thus far we can just use but instead of specifying grant as a prefix we'll use revoke we'll need to identify the current permissions before doing so now, before using revoke we just want to simply show you that granting usage is equivalent to using the create user feature in fact we should have documented create user let's do a search for it in our text file and create users who are permitted to access let's control G to find any other instances and it doesn't appear to be any but nonetheless it's the create user command that we're interested in using for just showing you how to create usage based users or anonymous users or low privileged users on the system so we're gonna open a MySQL instance and once we have that up, let's just launch our session here. We'll stretch this window back out and connect to MySQL, of course, as the user root at the local host. And let's confirm that we have the P option specified. Now it's specified. Let's confirm that password again. Now we're in. Always confirm who you're currently logged in as, so current user, to avoid doing any significant damage. If you're cognizant of who you're in as, you'll know the ramifications or have a sense of the ramifications of any commands that you could potentially run. So we're going to use create user to create an anonymous type user. Well, first let's see who we have on the system. A select user as well as host from mysql.user will reveal as such we have multiple Linux CBT users who we can run show grants for. Let's execute a show grants. Let's see who we ran the usage one for. That was Linux CBT3. So show grants for Linux CBT3 reveals that Linux CBT3 is an anonymous account or an account that has virtually no privileges just enough privileges to access the DBMS but not enough to use a particular DB since it's really a provisioning mechanism so how do we recreate a similar user we have Linux CBTs up to 9 let's create one called Linux CBT 10 using create user Linux CBT 10 which will ensure that any host will be able to log in using Linux CBT 10 Zero rows affected means no rows were updated or deleted, but a new row was inserted to reflect Linux CBT 10's entry into the MySQL.user table. There's a Linux CBT 10, and we'll want to run a show grants for Linux CBT 10 just to confirm that the privileges are identical. Grant usage on star dot star to Linux CBT 10, which means if we SSH out as root. In fact, let's just fix our host file right now. We'll let you into the local system and we'll modify etc hosts and on comment the entry for Linux CBT Media 1. Then we'll be able to SSH as root, which we're currently logged in as and, and anyway, so it doesn't matter. So since we are in as root, we'll SSH to Linux CBT Media 1. We'll accept the key because we've logged in using the FQDN or fully qualified domain name and let's just authenticate so that we can get a shell now from that remote system we are in as root let's MySQL user Linux CBT 10 just to confirm prompt for password the host is Linux CBT DB1 and the password as you know is currently set we didn't even specify one so it's none 
which means we can log in as any user. And if we select current user, you'll see as such. We're in as Linux CBT 10, so which tells us if you run the create user command with no password specified, the user gets created, but the user gets created just like the original anonymous user without a password, which can certainly be dangerous. So use create user with the password. It's very important. But create user creates a user with anonymous privileges. So effectively, if we execute a show databases, we'll see no privileged databases, including test, which we means, means that we're nobody on the system. If you want to drop the user, simply execute drop user, Linux CBT 10, and this will get rid of the user from the mysql.user table, a show grants fails, and the drop user also runs a flush, so it kills the access, although the user still has a session. But now when we quit and attempt to return to the database, we're unable to use it because the user has been deleted. Super. So you know that create user is pretty much equivalent to grant usage on star dot star. So we should mention that similar to create user Linux CBT3. Of course, identified by a certain password. Now what about revoke? Revoke is very easy to understand. We want to revoke privileges. Who can we pick on to revoke? We have a Linux CBT user, and we also have, well, we have multiple Linux CBT users, and we also have a root user at the remote host from Media One, multiple remote users at Media One, including the IP, the short name, and the FQDN. We should pick one after having run show grants and revoke the privileges. So let's execute a show grants root at 192.168.1.100 for example. Let's check our syntax here. We're missing four. And this particular user has all privileges to all databases and all tables minus the grant option. So this user is virtually a super user. How do we revoke these privileges? As we've mentioned, revoke is similar to grant. So you simply copy what you see in the grant and rework it. We want to revoke all privileges on star dot star to root at 192.168.1.100. Now you're wondering, can we specify without password? It needs to be specified just like the way it is. And we'll go with identified by and specify the user's password. In this case, it's XYZ123. If it fails, we have an incorrect password. And let's confirm that syntax again. The password seems to be correct, but we do have specified privileges, which is incorrect. And in this case, the small error that we're having here is related to the to instead of from. Let's recap. Let's show privileges for root at night, 192.168.1.100. We'll rerun the show grant. And this user currently has all privileges on all databases and all tables. The proper revoke looks like the following. Revoke all privileges, which is what we began with, on star dot star from the user. And in this case, the user is root at 192.168.1.100. We'll immediately follow this up with a show grants for root at 192.168.1.100. What this will do for us is it'll remove the privileges or revoke the privileges, not deleting the account or dropping the account from the system, but simply removing the privileges first from all of the global as well as database and table and column level privileges and routine level privileges and then it will show the grants which should reflect the new privilege set which returns the user to an anonymous or no privilege state. Let's try it. Notice one row in the set and for the previous run zero rows were affected. Now the user root at 192.168.1.100 is simply granted usage rights rather than full rights whereas before the user had full rights. So from the remote system let's attempt to log in 
to the remote host and we'll do so using the user account root at 192.168.1.100 and the DB is proper the host or the host that is is proper and the the prompt for the password is also proper the password in this case is XYZ123 and the full name is being submitted the fully qualified name is being submitted so we'll need to revoke access for the fully qualified name as well so let's go ahead and do that we'll revoke all privileges and this is because name resolution is working so if it weren't working this would be the proper account let's revoke all privileges for root at Linux CBT dot and Linux CBT that is DB media one that is Linux CBT media one dot Linux CBT dot internal followed by show grants for root at Linux CBT media one dot Linux CBT dot internal and it should return the user to the basic privileges state let's check that out again and revoke it says no such grant defined for the user let's double check what we have set for the user and we missed the one in Linux CBT media there should be a one right here and that's why now it works so the user is now granted usage which means if we attempt to connect with the proper password we'll correct connect if we have the right password we didn't specify the right password let's try that again and we're still specifying an incorrect password we'll try that again let's grant usage we can reset the password by the way using the usage or the grant usage on star dot star syntax that you see here so let's try it again we'll use the correct password this time in fact let's grant the user full rights so we'll grant usage or grant all on star dot star to root at Linux CBT media one dot Linux CBT dot internal identified by XYZ one two three let's show grants for root at Linux CBT media one dot Linux CBT dot internal the user now has full privileges now let's reduce the privileges once again returning the privileges to usage and then attempt to connect from the remote system again using XY or is attempting to use XYZ123 and we have the wrong user specified again which is probably the crux of the problem to begin with so since we're logged in as root let's not even specify a user and now we're in let's select current underscore user we're in as root at 192.168.1.100 instead of resolving the name it does it as IP however if we show grants for the currently logged in user we have usage rights which means if we show database we also have a limited view of the DBMS so revoking privileges doesn't actually get rid of the user accounts it simply removes the privileges from the proper databases and those databases let's use MySQL include the following followed by a show tables they include the main user table within the MySQL database which serves as the global table privileges or global privileges table as well as the other tables that we've mentioned including DB hosts prox privileges for routines tables privileges for table level privileges and columns priv for columns privileges the revoke statement will update all of those different tables within the MySQL database so that everything's appropriate as a result the users have been scaled back so one way to remove access or superfluous access to databases and tables is to use revoke if you want to get rid of the user you simply need to use the drop command so let's select user host from user and here are our users in order to get rid of them all together you'll need to drop them using drop user and for example root at 192.168.1.100 followed by select user comma host from user 
and now the user root at 192.168.1.100 has been dropped from the user table in the MySQL database. Now we certainly could drop multiple users at the same time. So another task may be drop multiple users simultaneously. Simply use the drop command, so in this case drop user user 1, comma, user 2, and so on, user 3. Let's drop a few users. We'll go ahead and drop user, and we have in our history, and we'll select when we're done, but we'll just remove, since these users have no host names, Linux CBT 2, Linux CBT 3, Linux CBT 4 three users one shot now we're left with five six seven eight and nine so we could execute these commands from an external script since the mysql client will allow us to run these commands from an outside perspective which brings up a separate note if you did want to run a one-off from outside of the mysql terminal monitor in other words in batch mode since this is considered interactive mode simply quit interactive mode run mysql against the local system but of course be sure to authenticate as a user root with a given password and that password should be XYZ123 and use the E option and in between single quotes specify the command that you'd like to run for example you'd want to drop the user and it's all from the MySQL database which contains the user table so you can simply execute a drop user followed by Linux CBT5 then Linux CBT 6, then Linux CBT 7. This will cause MySQL to run in batch mode, which outputs the output that typically would be sent to, to the console in terminal mode, but back to the shell. So it would simply enter, execute what it needs to execute, and then exit. Let's try this. We'll end the line with a semicolon. If you want to append additional commands, just follow up. Let's check our password here. This doesn't appear to be the right password. Let's confirm what we have set. And now it's run. We'll echo. And now this time we'll rerun a different command, which is simply select user hosts from mysql.user and end that with the semicolon. And now we no longer have 5, 6, 7, and 8, which means we can go ahead and delete 8 and 9 as well as Linux CBT. So let's get rid of Linux CBT as well as 8 and user number 9 followed by yet a separate command which is select. All this can be done from the shell just like using Perl. We'll select user host from mysql.user terminate it with a semicolon and the operation for the Linux CBT user fail because we didn't specify fully the user's name. But that's okay because the user's name is actually Linux CBT at Linux CB, at localhost that is. So let's run that rerun that select user to see who's there. MySQL successfully re removed the com the accounts 8 and 9 but did not remove Linux CBT because we incorrectly specified the username. So let's go ahead and fix that. The user's name is Linux CBT at localhost. Now the user has been removed and we've scaled back to only a few accounts. Super. Let's go ahead and clean up all the accounts before we exit this section and then move on to some more interesting things. We'll get rid of root at Linux CBT media 1 followed by root at Linux CBT media 1 dot Linux CBT dot internal followed by select user host and so on. There it is. Now we're back to the two original root users minus the anonymous users. So now no one can access and we should confirm. Although we've run drop user, let's see if from the remote system we can connect as the user root to Linux CBT DB1 using the password. Password's ABC123. Doesn't let us in. Let's try as XYZ123. Doesn't let us in because as we've mentioned, drop user is careful to execute a flush privileges for us at the end of the command sequence. 
So that's a little bit about using revoke as well as grant, two critical commands. And you'll see sure enough that when you use front end tools such as PHP MyAdmin, if you elect to dump the SQL that's executed to the screen, you'll see that all the commands that we're typing here are actually run by tools such as PHP MyAdmin.